for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Whenever you are in occupying force in another country, because they one of you gonna occupy the DRC, you and you have the military power, especially when you are backed by the United States, and you still do not address the issue of this militia group. We know in the DRC that this is just a pretext to have military presence in the DRC that's continuous. The ADF for us is our weapons of mass destruction. Never been found. We do not know what they do. Yet, it's always a pretext for military presence. On March 10, the United States blacklisted two extremist groups, one in Mozambique and the other in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The U.S. has declared these groups to be foreign terrorist organizations over accusations of having links to the Islamic State or ISIS. In the DRC, the Allied Democratic Forces, or ADF for short, has been blacklisted, and its leader, Sika Musa Baluku, has been named as a specially designated global terrorist. Actions such as these by the U.S. are seen as being a part of the war on terror. The U.S., however, has a long history of military intervention in the DRC and across the globe. Press releases and news reports have provided only minimum information in this instance of intervention in DRC. Is combating terrorism the only goal? What else is there to the picture? The month of March uh, had quite a few announcements. The U.S. military uh, make, uh, making the move to have U.S. military presence in DRC through the State Department declaring that uh, there is a link to ISIS in uh, DRC. Uh, we have an announcement with a new prime minister who's supposed to have his new cabinet release this week. So on the political field, that's what the, the Congolese are actually looking at at the moment. Uh, we all are waiting to see what will happen. But as we know, um, there won't be no much change around the new announcement, given the neoliberal path uh, that the new president has taken. Uh, but back to the ADF question, you know, the, when you look at the DRC, usually when you're reading news, uh, people get very confused with what is really happening in DRC because they throw these acronyms at them. They will say ADF, or they will say CNDP, they will say M23. So we have become a home of acronyms. And whenever you read the news, today you see a new acronym and you see another acronym it leaves you with this impression that this is just lawlessness. There is no hope. I don't even have the time to try to understand what is happening in DRC. But to me, it's very simple. The war in the DRC started in 1996. It's a war waged by US allies, Rwanda and Uganda. We invaded the Congo twice in 96 and 98 and continue to support proxy rebel militias. Now, to specifically speak about the ADF, the Allied Democratic Forces, those are Ugandan rebels who have been in the DRC since the late 90s. They have some political claim. No? They believe that the rule of uh, Uganda is not what the Ugandan people believe, uh, believe or fought for. Uh, they are somehow connected to a religious group. Uh, they say that they are Muslim uh, fighters and so on. And then since the late 90s, even with the invasions of Rwanda and Uganda in the DRC, they have never been stopped. There is another rebel group similarly to that too, the FDLR rebel group. They are connected to uh, the Hutu extremists who participated in the Rwanda genocide. Uh, the reason why I'm mentioning that Rwanda and Uganda invaded and still did not stop them is whenever you are in occupying force in another country, because they Rwanda and Uganda occupy the DRC, you and you have the military power, especially when you are backed by the United States, and you still do not address the issue of this militia group. We know in the DRC that this is just a pretext to have military presence in the DRC that's continuous. The ADF for us 
is our weapons of mass destruction. Never been found. We do not know what they do. Yet, it's always a pretext for military presence. And there have been numerous times where Uganda had military operations in the ERC. Um, they had uh, military operations where they didn't go after the uh, militia groups. The New York Tax Times reported that Ugandan soldiers who were in the Garamba Park in the ERC were not going after the ADF rebels. They were going after elephants to get the elephant task using helicopters and military logistics provided by the United States. So the New York Times already published that. We had the so-called Kony 2012, uh, when they went after the Lord Resistance Army, which is another pretext of having US military power. Uh, when uh, at one time you had uh, US youth actually clapping for US imperialism and militarism in Africa to go after another rebel group that never been uh, stopped as well. So for all this time, they haven't been stopped. But something very gruesome has been ongoing for at least over the past five years. In the area called North Kivu, in two towns, uh, one is called Beni and the other is Butembo in that area, people in these towns have been killed in a very gruesome way cut into pieces, burned to death, be it from babies to adults. People have shared information around this with the proper authorities and so on, and they are not being stopped. Each week you hear 10 people dead, 15 people dead, 20 people dead. But in all these attacks, when you read the press, they always say the ADF committed these crimes. And which is fascinating to me because I'm wondering what type of investigation within 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 24 hours of the killing, a journalist based in Kenya or Senegal <laughs> writing an article for different uh, Associated Press, um, you know, pu putting out these news wires, which type of investigation have they done to know that those who committed the killing are ADF? But we have information, right, from the United Nations themselves. The United Nations um, Security Council mandated a group of experts since the early 2000s to provide reports on the situation in the Congo. Uh, they provide two yearly uh, reports in June and in December. And the UN group of experts have documented uh, the so-called ADF uh, crimes. In, in their documentation, they have said things such as, the ADF rebel groups in some areas speak Kinyarwanda. Kinyarwanda is a language spoken mainly in Rwanda. So these Muslim terrorists somehow speak a language that comes from Rwanda, where Islam is a minority. And it's been documented. You have these ADF rebels who do that. But beyond what if, what's even in this uh, UN uh, group of experts report, even the people that we speak with on the ground, um, full disclosure, my family is from there. I've actually lost family members in their area. Whenever we speak to our contacts in these villages, they clearly tell us the attacks are known when they come, because the send a message say we are coming. It's usually close to you, Congolese army bases and UN forces who are in the DRC. When the killings take place, there is no military action from these armies. And after the killing, that's when you start seeing officials coming to try to find out what has unfolded. So people in the area are so angry at the UN. There was even a, a period a, a few years ago where the people of Beni um, and Butembo took stones and were throwing it at the UN peacekeeping forces because they were saying, why are you here with the largest peacekeeping missions and you still can protect the population where your mandate is to protect the population. So the people in the area are very clear 
that these forces who are killing them constantly are not necessarily the ADF, but it's a ragtag of rebel groups who for whatever political reasons are not being stopped for over decades and are decimating the population. Some may argue because of the wealth that exists in the, these villages, the land and the mineral resources. There are evidence that the oil in Lake Albert, uh, which is at the border of Congo and Uganda, extends all the way through Beni going into the Virunga Park. This whole question about do you explode oil into uh, the UNESCO historical uh, park where the people say you shouldn't be uh, exploding oil because it's gonna destroy the habitat. It's gonna destroy the environment. So this this is continuous. When we're looking at the situation, uh, Beni and the Tembo, uh, it's clear that the attacks, to me at least, and the people on the ground, is that the attacks are happening because of the land, uh, the resources on the land. It's a uh, huge arable land. Uh, it has oil uh, from, you know, there, there's been some studies that have shown that the oil Congo has over 2 billion barrels of oil in one of its lake. Uh, the lake is called Lake Albert at the border of Uganda and Rwanda. Uh, there is a, at least an estimated uh, 2.5 billion barrels of oil and this oil extends from the border all the way to these towns. Um, and then um, going all the way through the park, the Virunga Park, which is a uh, UNESCO protected site. Um, and there's this question around, should we explode oil or not? And the people have resisted. You know, we must protect the environment uh, rather than exploding oil. But during a period, at least say half a decade in that area, massacre has taken place with no accountability uh, to who, who is committing the crime and actually stopping them when we know there is a strong military presence in the area to stop them, one being the UN peacekeeping forces of about 22,000 strong uh, UN peacekeepers. Uh, you have the Congolese army and you have had uh, invading occupying forces uh, in the east of Rwanda and Uganda. All of them have not been able uh, to stop these, uh, these ADFs. The second one that now implicates the US much more, uh, when the US State Department uh, put out a statement uh, saying that there is a link between the DRC uh, and ISIS uh, is quite problematic. It's quite problematic because this has been dispelled by Congolese themselves and other international investigators. The UN group of experts in their report have written numerous times that there is no such link between the ADF of the DRC with ISIS. This started a few years ago. You know, it was coming usually from uh, Museveni of Uganda, the president of Uganda, uh, where they will have press conferences in uh, Kampala. They'll share with US officials that the ADF has linked to Al-Qaeda. The ADF has linked to Al-Qaeda. And as they did this comment, it was meant to get US military support. And when they received the US military support, they usually use it against their own civilians. You now, look at what unfolded in the past elections, the brutality um, that took place during the past Uganda elections, where Ugandans themselves uh, were brutalized by the military and by the state. So, as this statement continued to happen, he, he had to take the UN group of experts to investigate. So, they've said already numerous times there is no such links. There is a former UN group of experts. Uh, his name is Dan Fahey. He wrote an article called uh, Mr. X. And this article is very important because he described his experience as a UN group of experts. And in this article, he explained how a rebel, a, this person, was able to fool officials that he was an ADF, ADF soldier and try to link himself with uh, terrorist groups. And he showed how the story was not true, very, very clearly de detailing the article. 
So when you have a former UN group of experts who's providing evidence that one, these ADF rebel groups do not have a proper narrative, when the current UN group of experts are publishing at least two reports that I've seen, uh, clearly stating that there is no link between the ADF and ISIS, why would the State Department in the United States put out a statement saying that they have uh, a connection? Does the United States has better intel than the UN group of experts and Congolese themselves on the ground? I would argue absolutely not. And if they do have this type of level of, uh, of details and information, Congolese will question that. So which means that you've known this connection for a while and failed to engage. Why now? We know why now. We are very clear that the United States is trying to implement its military presence in the DRC to counter China. The reason why they are implementing uh, the base is, is nothing new. They have been wanting to build their base in Camp Base in Kisangani uh, as a prime location, which is in the northern, uh, northeastern part of the DRC that allows for any military operation in the area to be able to move from north, south, east, and west of Africa very fast because you are really right at the center of the African continent. And there are reasons to believe because of the area where they are, uh, there is huge re resources. But we are clear that Africa is not on the African continent for uh, humanitarian reasons. We know on March 19th, the United States is doing a military operation in Accra, Ghana. Uh, my comments with this increased militarization of Africa, and particularly the Congo, is can the Congolese also open a US military base in any US cities, do military operations, protect Americans from terrorist groups, and so on? Uh, if we don't have this type of bilateral uh, understanding, um, there is no rationale of having US military. Uh, you can't have an arsonist coming as a firefighter to try to put down the fire now, as we are very clear of why the war is. But the US is moving along uh, with the plan. And why they're moving along with the plan? Right now, the president of the DRC is very close to the United States. Uh, he's being supported by the United States. It makes it very easy uh, for the United States to be able to achieve its objectives, be it economic, or military in the DRC. But for the Congolese, uh, we won't stop uh, shouting and expressing truth of what is unfolding to us. Just this March or March 15th, I mean, imagine um, last month, actually in February, the Italian ambassador uh, was killed. Uh, still don't see the US investigation to determine who killed the Italian ambassador, but they can find out that ISIS is in the DRC. But after the death of the Italian ambassador, Congolese are still being killed. Just this past uh, March 15th, uh, this Sunday, Congolese were massacred in the same area. Um, of course, the press stated again that you know, this is ADF. Uh, there are institutions also that have said that the ADF committed these crimes. You know, I think the youngest person to be killed in this massacre was two year old. Uh, dozens of people were uh, massacred and it's not stopping. And we know this, this terrorism is not necessarily linked to ISIS, it's to break the spirits of resistance of the Congolese in this area who have said, we are not going to stop fighting for our land and it's happening in total impunity. But the way forward for DRC is for, and as Congolese are fighting, you know, looking at Kwame Krum as a challenge of the Congo, as he said that you know, Congo's challenges is both internal and external. We knew, and we still know today, that Congolese will continue to fight for their own liberation. But the challenges that they face is that the external forces um, have military power that makes it hard for them uh, to address the local challenges. So for the external forces, let's use Krumah's call of putting pressure on negative forces outside of the DRC 
that's uh, destabilizing the DRC. So for all good people of the world, be it on the African continent or anywhere else, welcome all these people are fighting on the inside. We hope you will be fighting on the outside, exposing these lies that the ADF is connected to ISIS, exposing the increased militarization of the Congo and Africa, and uniting with the Congolese as the fight to liberate the country in 2021. And very soon, we won't see these uh, lies continuing because people will be clear, what are these acronyms, these so-called praxis supported uh, by Western nations, supported by Congo's neighbors, to have a pretext for war. What are Congolese fighting for? We are fighting for liberation and control of our land and resources. And what is our final objective? We want humanity to live in justice, peace, and dignity. Thank you.